enter to the tunnels through some very beige looking doors. And it's really like an Alice in Wonderland experience that you enter into this incredible labyrinth and tunnels underneath the city. Really what this space gives us a glimpse of is the underbelly of Sydney, is this whole world, this whole network that exists below the surface. Gil Minovini has descended into Sydney's depths. There is a cult of people like me that are obsessed with him underneath the city that know about tunnels and spaces like this. As the director of the Vivid Festival, she's taken over a tunnel network. It's taken us the best part of a year to get permissions to use this space from a range of uh, government organisations, but the opportunities outweigh the challenges in that this space is incredibly sexy with or without lights. What's taking shape is an exhibit called Dark Spectrum. A series of rooms tied to different emotions, featuring lights, robots and dance music across 900 metres of abandoned rail tunnel. So we've installed about two kilometres of fibre optic cabling into the tunnels to create a network to run the whole experience. The venue itself tells this amazing story. You start in a quite small constricted spaces and then you end up in spaces like this in these huge railway tunnel sections. And then you end with this quite spectacular curving tunnel back up to the, uh, up to the real world. Good afternoon. Hello. How are you? Good. How are we doing? The PA is going in. We have a lot of cabling to go up and hopefully we'll be hearing sound at the end of this week. Nice. Lighting designer Richard Neville hatched the idea during COVID quarantine three years ago. The hard part was finding a space. I grew up here and you hear the urban legends, the stories about the terrain tunnels that aren't used. So about a year ago, we went to the City of Sydney archives. We rifled through a bunch of paperwork from the 1920s, the 30s, and basically built our case to go to the team at, at Vivid and say, look, I, I think this space exists. Right next door to the tunnels is a shopping mall and one of Australia's busiest train stations, Wynyard, in the heart of the CBD. The numbering of the stations at Wynyard is quite peculiar because there are platforms three, four, five and six. There is no one and two because one and two, they physically exist. But they don't have any train. They're hidden from view behind a wall. Wynyard's ghost platforms one and two were designed for a rail line that would cross the harbour and continue to the northern beaches. It was an enormously ambitious project, driven by the same man who led construction of the Harbour Bridge, John Bradfield. I think when you look at Bradfield's plans in the 1920s and you think, oh, well, I wish this had happened. What a city we would have had. The railway would have come from Narrabeen down to Manly, across to Mossman and then linked into the North Shore Railway, across the bridge, through the city and then probably out to the southern suburbs to the airport. But money became a problem. By 1932, when they were coming to conclusion, the depression was in full swing, so state budget was completely ruined, so there was no money for big transport projects. The tunnels became part of the tram network for several decades, later housing a car park and a pistol shooting range. They've been shut off to the public for years. We managed to get access and had a look through. The place was full of rats, cockroaches, water. It was pretty horrible. So it's taken a year to now get to this point where we're actually putting an event in. The latest phase of the tunnel's evolution will soon be complete and there are plans to take dark spectrum around the world. Well, I think every city we look at, whether that's Berlin, London or New York, has spaces like this and it's an amazing opportunity to be able to invite local people like myself into a space and go, hey, did you know this existed in your own city? So I've actually never been in the tunnels at, at Wynyard, so it's going to be a new experience for me. I hope that they are inspired. I hope that they're exhilarated. I hope at times they're just a tiny bit scared maybe um, and you know just a sense of joy it's a joyous project